you have to be awesome in your next presentation. So how do you create compelling content? Number one question, what is my presentation's purpose? Presentations need clear goals. I've sat through too many slideshows where the presenter and the audience has no idea where we're going. We're wandering around, lost, or asleep. To identify your goals, know that all presentations are one of two types, persuade or inform. For an informed presentation, your goal is to convey a specific message. At the end, does your audience know more as you reach the last slide? And for persuade, your goal is to get the attendees to agree with your point of view. Specifically, you want their approval, or at least your boss, or maybe your boss's boss to agree with your request. Hi, this is Les from Power Up Training. And this first half PowerPoint presentation is a little over the top persuasion video. My goal is to persuade you to radically rethink how you design your PowerPoint presentations and convince you the value of watching to the end. The second half will be inform as I instruct you in the mechanics of building awesome content. With your goals identified, more on that in a moment, you must effectively communicate on all four levels of learning. By its very nature, PowerPoint is a visual medium because you're plastering words and images up on the big screen. The second technique is matching your dialogue with the presentation slides. If you fail to marry your speaking script with your visual slides, you will lose your audience. Planning your speaking points during the design process is critical. The third learning element seems to be out of touch with PowerPoint. How's your audience going to touch and feel what's displayed on the big screen? That's not true. The key is to interact with your audience, ask questions, look them in the eye. People engagement is actually the strength of PowerPoint when in person. And lastly, win their minds. You want them to be thinking about your goals, not just listening or on autopilot phone mode. So how do all of these come together for the creation process? Ideas. Great ideas are the foundation to awesome success. Each slide deck is based on your ideas that support your goals. Each slide page should have an idea based purpose pointing to your goals. Each building block bullet point is based on an idea supporting the page's goal. Working with goal based ideas at the beginning will lead to awesome content and a successful presentation. So what are we going to cover in the rest of this tutorial? We're going to help in clarifying your goals, the mechanics and converting your idea goals into results, focus on the detailed editing process for clarity, how to create an interest based story arc and how to write compelling bullet points, including multiple calls to action. So let's go power up to creating awesome content in PowerPoint. Visualize your end results by understanding your goals. Probably the easiest way to get started is to best understand your assignment. Who gave you the presentation assignment? Your boss, your professor, a class assignment. This is key. Know the assignment and that will be the highest goal. Do not assume if the task is vague, get clarification or confirmation. Fail this step and all else is doomed. Once the highest level assignment goal is confirmed, decide if this is a persuade or an inform. The decision will shape how you plan to present. The point A to point B strategy for an informed presentation on a project status update is different from persuading your management to fund your latest capital project. Inform explainer presentations focus on the clarity and brevity of information as you present it. Stay crisp and to the point. However, for Persuade, you must lay down the stepping stones at a point by point until you get to your conclusion that you want your audience to endorse. 
Now, you're ready to hyperjump into brainstorming. There is where you capture your major talking points, which will later fuel your individual slides. But do not get caught up on a slide creation steps yet. Instead, focus on getting your ideas down on paper fast. Remember, strong ideas drive successful presentations. Do not get distracted. While you could brainstorm on paper, I recommend using PowerPoint outline mode as this will save you future formatting steps. And the PowerPoint outline is designed for speedy capturing of ideas. If you've never used outline before, see our earlier tutorial listed above. Once done, give it a break, then come back a few hours later. I always find that I've improved my ideas once I return. Now, let's get down to detailed business. I'm gonna slip off the screen to give us a little more workspace. Now, let's roll up our sleeves and get to work organizing our goal-based ideas. In the beginning, you want to create a strong story arc. You will start off by laying out your goals. For informed presentations, explain what new information you'll be presenting. But for persuade, it becomes a bit more complex as you may need to explain the problem you're trying to solve and preview how you plan to solve it, but be careful on sensitive topics. Do not reveal too much at the start as people may make an instant negative snap judgment before you even start to lay out your reasoning. Step two will be the middle of your story arc. This is the core of the presentation. For inform, walk through the information, be clear and concise. Use words illustrations when needed to explain. Later, we're gonna focus on the graphical representation of your ideas and goals, but focus on the words. To persuade, it becomes even more complex as you're trying to change minds. Make sure the issue or problem is clearly described and then how you plan to address the hurdles, which will lead up to the concluding request to persuade them to your call to action which is to approve your request. And the concluding stage is the big bang ending. And for the informed presentation, it might not be a big firework exploding ending, but a summary of the facts, and then a confirmation that everyone understands what was presented, which may turn into a group interaction. But your end goal is to make sure everyone understands your information once you leave the PowerPoint stage. Now for Persuade, this does need to be a big ending, or more specifically, a clear call to action. State the request clearly and then ask for approval. Close the deal. Don't be timid and expect the group just to assume that you want their approval. Ask for the approval at the end. My only exception to the ask for approval is that if you suspect you might not get the approval right then and there. Two things. Rethink your presentation. Is it not strong enough? Has it overcome all the possible objections in advance of asking for approval? And secondly, if you are afraid that asking in the meeting might result in a final defeat, then state that you plan to circle around and pull the key stakeholders so that you can win them over one by one. If you call for a decision at the end of the presentation and you don't know how it's gonna turn out, you should consider doing some upfront lobbying with the key team members in advance. Win allies before the presentation. Okay, let's get the mechanics of editing your ideas by flushing out your brainstorming notes that have been put into a story arc. Your outlying bullet points are talking points. You're not writing a novel. PowerPoint presentations are interactive presentations of ideas by way of visuals and your added audio commentary. You should not be reading your bullet points. Instead, use bullet points to help you elaborate and illustrate your talking points and as signposts 
so as not to get lost during your live presentation. If you make the mistake of listing everything in your bullet points, then you've become irrelevant and you might as well have just sent an email. And typically that approach puts too many words on a page. A powerful presentation keeps the audience engaged as they need to watch and listen to you present. While you're putting the words for your slide page in the outline, I cannot recommend enough that you also start taking notes of what your speaking points or script will be to accompany each stage of the presentation. And the best place is to turn on the PowerPoint notes section, which will let you keep notes with each slide. Let's move to the specifics of wordsmithing the outline. Word choice. Make sure you're utilizing action words and better yet, individual imagery to make the whole presentation come alive. Look at this example. Here's the first boring version. The last quarter sale numbers were 10% higher. But now how about this? Previous quarter sales rocketed up a strong 10%. Note how we change from the passive voice to active and we use the qualifier word of strong. Next up, powerful bullet points. Compose bullet points like headlines, not as dull sentences. And what's a good headline? Something that entices people to click on the link to read the complete story or waiting for the follow-up slide page. It should be short and intriguing. If you saw the following two bullet points, which one would you want to know more about? Project status update report or team exceeds 10 goals and misses one. Yes, yes, that does sound like clickbait, but that's the point. It stays the project update, but your audience now wants to know more. And since we're now all about bullet points, let's get into the stylistic details. Bullet point punctuation is tricky. Bullet points can take multiple forms. Let's start with the simple bullet list. Don't do this. Look at what we did. We took a simple list and we created a consolidating main bullet point and then created sub bullet points with fewer words. And the key concepts now jumps out more effectively. This is another case of less is more in PowerPoint. More PowerPoint punctuation style rules. Note the use of the colon and no period or commas in the list, nor the word and on the next to the last line. Also, look at the capitalization of the first line. It's capitalized like a newspaper headline with the first letter of each word, but only the first letter on the lower sub bullet points. There's a consistency style here. Do you have to follow this style? No, but it is a traditional approach to more formal PowerPoint presentations. Next debate. Do I use numbered lists or bullet icons? This is easier than you might think. If a list must follow a specific order, like a sequence of events, then use numbers. Otherwise, stick to bullet icons. See this example to building a sandwich. It has some very specific order to the steps. You wouldn't eat first, you save that for last. But the item list is just that, a list of the things that you need. And you can use that as a bullet point because there is no required order. Now to something tougher. Parallel construct. What is it? It means that you keep every bullet item in the same format with respect to starting with nouns or verbs. Here's a couple examples. There is no symmetry in the first example. The first line is a noun and the next starts 
with a verb. The good example is all noun-based. A variation is to start off with all verbs. And there's an advantage to using all verbs as they represent actions, which can be more exciting and forceful in a presentation. You can mix strategies in different slides. Just don't mix them up on the same slide. And yes, this is hard. If you look closely at my outline in this presentation, I've broken this rule, but it's a long outline. And in real life, I would try to be consistent on each individual slide page. Next up is symmetrical bullet point construction choices. Look at this example. By themselves, neither bullet is wrong, but when we combine them together, you see that the first one has an introductory statement and a colon, and then some additional info. The second one is just a statement. On each slide, keep the style the same, one way or the other. And yes, there are always creative exceptions. Here, I'm gonna take a single complex bullet item and split it into two parts with a sub bullet point which may break the symmetry, but it helps drive home the point of a complex issue. And finally, how many bullet points should you have on a single slide? This is debatable between seasoned PowerPoint presenters. And even then, the rules can be broken. But remember, less is typically more effective. Ideally, per slide, keep the bullet points to six or fewer. Or if you have too many, break them into multiple slides. But rules can be broken. Here's an example. A long list of actions needed to complete the project. The point is not the individual steps, but that we have lots of things still to do. I would never read or expect my audience to read it all, but take away the size of the effort needed to reach our completion. As you see, the rule of six or fewer bullet points can be broken. In fact, all the rules I've covered today can be broken if you know why you're deviating from the standard and often it's for effect. Check and check again. This phase is critical. A fabulously constructed presentation that is superbly put together and elegantly designed can be destroyed by one single mistake. A wrong fact, a misspelled word, some bad grammar can sink your credibility. Live presentations have stopped me in my tracks when someone raises their hand and says, hey, you got a spelling mistake on line three. That's a killer. So double check the facts, the spelling, the grammar, the tone, the story arc, and your goals. You cannot be too careful. Check it again. Now, get brutal. Cut away unnecessary thoughts and words and unnecessary ideas. Shorter is always better. The worst sin of any presentation is not being plain in graphics, but that it goes way too long. Each extra moment of a presentation in a darkened room risks someone nodding off to sleep. Finally, it cannot hurt to go back one last time to polish and edit to make it shine. All of this before we add any fancy pictures or colors. If you can add power and drama before any graphic formatting, you have the foundation of an awesome presentation. This tutorial is part two of our six part Mastering PowerPoint series. Part three takes your goal-based foundation and focuses on effective communication design. But if you want to dig deeper into advanced content creation, check out our Rethinking PowerPoint Design Strategy. Don't forget to download this course PDF handout material, which is listed in the YouTube links below. Now, power with me and continue your PowerPoint journey.